are these two stanzas talking about? Yes. Yes. Okay, and the focus of all of that act, God's activity is taking place when? In these, in these verses here. When we're what? Sleeping. Sleeping. We don't normally think of that, do we? God's watching over us and caring for us when we're sleeping. This morning I want to... Uh, get us to focus on, we've been focusing on this is my father's world and um, I thought I'd like us to focus on the father's focus today and I've been talking about this in various ways all week long um, and typically at the end of the second week of camp, those of you that have been here for two weeks, what is your most desperate need? Sleep. Is anybody sleepy this morning? Is anybody like just really jazzed and ready to go? There's a couple of you. Have you all been getting, those of you that are jazzed, have you been getting your sleep? No? <laughs> okay, so maybe there's something else that you're eating or drinking that's got you jazzed, huh? Okay, I would like us to turn to Psalm 127. Psalm 127, it is on page 881, if that helps. Does that help anyone? Yes. It does. Okay, if it helps one person, then I'll keep doing it. Okay, Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2, and I think for some of you, these verses will be very familiar. So one of the things that I want to do, when things get familiar, it always helps to read them from a different version. Actually, even this morning, uh, that last line or so, a few of us kind of stumbled around because we're just not used to singing those stanzas with that song, and, and it helps us to focus in better. So, who has Psalm 127 verse 1 and 2? Okay, even though I messed up my PowerPoint, it's really 1 and 2. Who has that in the King James Version? When you want to read it? Now, you have, you read it, you have to stand up, you have to face the majority of everybody, and you have to talk louder than Mr. Pinkham. Okay, you can Okay. So, and at the rest of you have to remember that if I pick on you. Except the Lord build the house, they may be in vain, but build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved to sleep. Good. Um, anybody have it in the Home and Study Bible? Home and Study Bible? You have it in the home side way? Okay, you have to stand up. Same thing. You have to produce. Okay. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays the Lord in vain. In vain you get up early and stay up late. Work is hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the one he loves. Good. So, oh, let me ask a question at this point. It's pointless to get up early. So there's an excuse for your counselors, right? <laughs> right? And it's pointless to go to bed late. Okay, counselors, now you got one on them. Okay. Um, is that what it's really saying? No. Okay, who has uh, these two verses in uh, the NASB? Yes. Mark? NIV. NIV? Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. 
for he grants sleep to those he loves. Okay? Let me ask you a question. And if there are other versions out there, I'm going to get to those. Right. Hopefully. Okay, so is the point, is the point of this passage, oh, well, okay, then we don't need watchmen on the city. Is that the point? Okay, the answer is? No. no. Okay, is the point, uh, okay, forget it. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to build the city. Is that the point? No. no. Okay, uh, is the point that, I'm on dangerous ground here because I might get, uh, not the answer I'm looking for, but uh, is the point, um, yeah, it's pointless to get up early. Wow, that wasn't quite such a fast response that time. Is the point that we sh it's pointless to get up early, so we can sleep in till noon. No. Is that the point? <laughs> okay, those of you that said yes, biblically, you're wrong. <laughs> Survey says, eh. Okay, how about this? Is it pointless to go to bed late? Is that the point? Okay, it may be pointless in some of your opinions, but is that the point of this set of verses? Okay. Okay, is it pointless that we should work so we have something to eat? Is that the point of this set of verses? No. Okay, all of those things. Is there anything wrong with doing those things? No. No, there isn't. But that's not the point of these verses. All right, who has another version? Aaron. The who? Yes, okay. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it, it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Read that last two phrases again. After going to bed late, like you did last night. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else have a different version? Randy? And not the Randy Haynes version. No, no the RWH is okay. not. Okay, it's the NLT. Okay. And it reads, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. Okay. Any other versions out there? there. Gabe. Uh, the MSG. MSG. That's something they put on Chinese food, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the MSG. What's the MSG? The message. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, if God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. God doesn't guard the city. The night watchman might as well nap. It is useless to rise early and go to bed late. Okay, Gabe, before you sit down, second to the last sentence that you read in that verse. Read that one again, right after retiring late. <laughs> it's useless to rise early and go to bed late. And one after that. Ah, work your weary fingers to the bone. Okay, any other translations that we haven't hit yet? Yes. The who? Revolution. Okay. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Good. Okay, any others that we may have missed? Any other versions? Okay, so if it's not about watchmen and building the city and working hard and getting up late or not getting up late, going to bed late or going to bed early, and there's nothing wrong with any of those things, right? There's nothing wrong with it. What is it about? Yes? It's about a spiritual health. A spiritual house? And a person. Okay, you got to give me more than that. 
It says, unless the Lord builds the house. It's talking about you need a foundation in the Lord. Okay, you've got to have a foundation in the Lord. What does that mean? Yes. It's useless to do anything without God. The focus here is that it's all about your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Now, it's real easy. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25. Don't be anxious for your life as to what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body as to what you shall put on it. Now, Aaron's version and Gabe's version, and I may have forgotten another one, but they both use the word anxious or anxiety. How many of you find yourself anxious or, well, we won't use the worried word because, you know, we don't want to sound unspiritual, but uh, how many of you find yourself at various points in your life and your walk with the Lord anxious? Any of you anxious about tomorrow's concert? See, I would have thought one of the conductors would have raised their hands. <laughs> It's, is not life more than food and the body than clothing? Verse 26, look at the birds of the air, that they, don't not, they do not sow, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Are you? This is the interactive part of chapel. Are you? Yes. How do you know that from this week when some things we talked about? Because what? We are created in God's image. We're the only ones that were created in God's image. Verse 27. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? That's a game, right? That you stack blocks? No, it's a unit of measurement, right? It's, can any of you add any height? To, can you do that? Can you make yourself grow? Some of you might hang from the door jams and, you know, hope that you'll stretch. You can't. You really can't. Why are you anxious, verse 28, about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. But... If God so raise the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more do so for you, O men of little faith? Do not be anxious then, saying, oh, 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 What shall we eat? What are we going to drink? When's lunch coming? When is Mr. Uh, Mr. Ben going to, Mr. Harding going to let us out and choir? I'm going to die. Starvation. Oh, okay, I'm exaggerating. It's not. That's not really in this. In this. With what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. For your heavenly Father, what? He knows that you need these things. But, 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 but. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious tomorrow for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, we need to put this in the correct biblical focus, and we need to avoid going to one biblical extreme or the other, we need to stay at the center of biblical tension. I have heard some people say, well, I'll just let go and let God. I'll let go and let God. And they sit down and they do nothing. And they expect God to just drop everything in on top of them. You know, I... I believe God has a sense of humor, not, I think he has a sanctified sense of humor, because if I was God and I had somebody like that, I'd say, okay, okay, hope, and you'd be buried. And they'd go, let me out. Okay, good, God doesn't do that. But there are some people just, oh, I'm going to let go, 
and like God and they do absolutely nothing. The Bible has a lot, and they've gone to one extreme. They, the Bible has a lot to say about disciplines for the purpose of godliness. There are things that God commands us to do in, our, in his word. There are attitudes, more importantly, that God expects us to develop and have. There is heart conditions that God's word is very explicit that we're supposed to have. However, ladies... You get two minutes to go to sleep because I'm going to talk to the guys. Although, you can always listen in. Guys, I'm a guy. We fix things, right? That's what we do, right? As guys, we fix things. Okay, this is what drives us nuts about women. It's like, I just want to share my feelings. I want to talk. No, you told me you had a problem. I got a solution. Let's go. Okay? Right? We fix things. Okay, this is what drives me nuts about shopping. Mrs. Pinkham, she wants to go for the experience and she wants this. Is this good? Is this, do you like this on me? That boy, is that a loaded question? Do you like, does this make you look fat? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. As guys, what do we want to do? Go out there, tag it, bag it, and drag it home. Right? Yeah, see? The guys know. Here's the danger, guys. Here's the danger for us. We can get so caught up in, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this, I'm going to do that, I got to do that, I'm going to be like this. God's word says this, that we got all wrapped up in the doing and the rules and we forget all about the relationship. If you have a relationship, if you have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, it's not about rules. It's about the relationship. That's what produces right living. So don't go to one extreme or the other. Don't say, I'm going to let go and let God. So I don't have to do anything in my walk before the Lord. And don't go to the other extreme where it's all about rules. It's all about, I've got standards. <laughs> And if you step on my standards, I'll squish you like a bug. <laughs> that is not the way God intends us to live our lives. And you know I'm exaggerating. But if we're really honest with ourselves, at various points in our walk, we will swing to one really unbiblical extreme or the other, and we won't stay at the center of biblical tension. So those verses we all read together... We miss the focus that God's saying, me, I want you. I want a relationship with you. All this other stuff in my word, yeah, those are good disciplines. And I expect, I expect that as part of our relationship, you're going to respond with a loving heart. The one thing that blessed me over and over again is when my boys, when they were younger, and I'm talking teenagers and younger, when they obeyed me because they loved me and they wanted to obey me instead of, well, dad said it, we have to do it. Or worse yet, if we don't do it, we're going to get punished. And I don't like being punished. Okay, the time my one son said a dirty word and I used the same trick my mother did. Oh, dirty mouth, we can clean that. Here's a bar of ivory soap, take a bite. He bit a third of the bar off. <laughs> and the rule was 60 seconds in the mouth, no spitting. Okay, that's the last time he used a dirty word. Okay, did he use, not use dirty words because he didn't want the cake to uh, eat? He flossed and brushed and mouthwashed for like the next half hour. And he told me later, he said, I couldn't get that taste out of my mouth. Okay, yes, success as a parent. Okay, <laughs> but did the next time he not use a dirty word because he didn't want the ivory soap in his mouth or because he realized, because I explained it to him as part of that, that's an offense to God and offense to me. And was his heart... You know, I love dad too much to hurt him like that. You think our Heavenly Father is any different? 
The verses in Matthew talk about seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. What does that mean? That means putting the relationship for, first, saying, here's who I'm going to be. Here's the thing I have the freedom to do or I have the freedom not to do because of my relationship with my Heavenly Father. Do you realize how freeing that is in your walk with the Lord? To be able to say, Heavenly Father, show me. Does this interfere with our relationship? Because I don't see something explicitly in Scripture that says, don't do that. Now, young people, if it says in Scripture, don't do that explicitly, there's no question. It offends God. But there's a lot of things and there's a lot of rules in Christianity that we've kind of built up over the years. It's the same thing the Pharisees did. The Pharisees originally had a lot of great spirituality, but what did they do? They made it all about rules first and relationship second. Make sure it stays the correct order. Seek first the righteousness that comes in God's kingdom. So, that's what we got to sing. So stand up. It's 42. Father, cause us, cause me to remember to not get mired down in the nitty-gritty details of life to the point that it distracts me from our relationship. Father, cause me to always ask the question, not what would you do, but would this please you? Would this, whatever this is, Father, I ask that you would cause me to always ask the question, will this draw me closer to you? Will this make our relationship sweeter and closer? Father, I want to do that because I love you. I want to do it out of a res responsive, loving heart. And Father, I recognize that this is your world, not mine. Father, each hour of today cause each one of us to have our focus on you. In Jesus' name, amen.